What is up everybody and welcome back to the BBA bus where I make videos for you about my life here in my self-converted short bus. If you're new to the channel, I would encourage you to go back and look at some of my build playlist so that you can get an idea of what it took to make this school bus into a fully functional off-grid home. If you are new to the channel, I'd also encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. It goes a long ways for a small creator like me. I make these videos for your education and your entertainment. So if you like this video, if you learned a little something, then hit that button down below and it'll help me out a lot. Today, we are continuing our look at the Zero Breeze Mark II portable air conditioner. And I'm kind of excited for this video, especially. In video one, we unboxed it and took a quick overview of what it is coming out of the box and I'll put a tag for that right here. In video two, we turned it on, put it to the test against what it is advertised to do on the website. I'll put the tag for that right over here. So you guys can go look at those two first. In this video, we're gonna address a problem that I in my particular case have with having this unit here in the bus. And that is that I have about 115 square feet so I don't have the space to have this thing sitting on my floor, sitting on my table, sitting on my counter all the time. So I need a place to put it. Yes, I could just stick it under the bed in the back of the bus and then every time I wanna use it, go take it out, put it around, bring it in here, but then it still has to sit on the floor, sit on a counter, sit in some space while I use it. We are gonna put it somewhere where it can be stored, but also used. So that's the idea. Let's get right into it so we can see what I have in mind. All right, so right off the bat, let's get this out of the way. It is a colossal mess in this bus right now, but that's because I've started to take things apart in a way that we can get into this and figure out what is going on in this space. So the dimensions of this unit, including the battery, which is attached to it underneath, allow it to fit in this space right here under my forward facing dinette seat. Now I have to put the battery in first and then I slide the air conditioner on top and then it clicks together and I can put the put the lead on in the back and then it can sit in there. However, we need to direct the air somewhere as well as direct the intake and the exhaust that come in the back end. So that's going to mean a couple things for this space. One, this unit is just the right size to fit in here without the hoses coming off the back. So we are gonna cut a hole in the back end of this storage space so that the hoses have a place to go out the back. That's gonna take those hoses into the bottom end of this closet right here. That's the attachment piece for the hoses. I've been kind of looking at sizing for now. We're gonna run those hoses through the closet and through this wall, and then I'm gonna direct them out the side wall of the bus right underneath my water inlet fills in the back doors. I'll show a little clip of that so you can see what's going on. Right under this window is where that seat is. So this is where that storage area is. You'll see inside that storage box, the wheel well is sitting right here. So that's where the storage area is. My closet is here with this space. And then here is the door. And I'm planning on putting my exhaust and intake right here. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because my water tank is here too. So I'm not sure where the space is in there to allow that. It may be one down here and one above it. We're gonna play around and see what we can get. Now that is part one of the install process, dealing with the intake and exhaust for the compressor and the cooling unit in the back. So that's gonna go out the back, out the side wall, and I have some, I have some, plastic vent grates with bug screens in them and that's going to be what it looks like on the outside going into the hoses like this and that's going to go in and out the back end of that unit. Now my delivery for the front as far as the cold air coming out of there how am I going to get that into my space? Well if you remember your physics lessons from high school cold air sinks relative to hot air so it would not be ideal for the cold air to come out the front of this seat because then it's just going to pour out and then sit and pool down here in the bottom of the bus so i got to find a way to get it up a little higher so what i've done is gotten some auxiliary accessory insulated double walled uh air, air conditioning tubing so this is going to carry the cold air from the front of there, also through the back wall here, up the back of my closet where it'll hit a T. This T is going to sit in the back of my closet either just under that shelf level or just above that shelf level. And then on either side of the T, 
I'm going to install this vent. One on this side of the closet and one on the bed side of the closet. The cool thing about this vent is that this centerpiece you can tighten and loosen and that'll open and close this vent. So if I want air to come out this side only, I'll just tighten down the centerpiece on the far side vent and then all the air will come out here and pour over the dinette area. If I want to cool my bed zone, I'll tighten down this one and open up the side on the other side of the bed and that will make the air only go into the bed zone, which will help cool down my sleeping area at night. All right, I'm ready to do a whole bunch of contorting to get this cut as well as those hoses fed. We have to open this fridge drawer time and time again for me to get into the back there so I can actually get the cut through the sidewall. But first things first, let's trace the profile on the inside of this wall so we can cut a hole so this can go and snap through the wall into the back of this sucker. I'm gonna cut a little wide, that way we're just a little roomy, got some comfortable space. It doesn't have to be snug. Nobody's gonna see in there. It doesn't have to be like crazy perfect clean, but I'm gonna try to stick to this. Well, I've got a line drawn on the inside of this chair. I decided to go from the chair to the closet instead because I just have a little bit more working room here, but you can see a rough line drawn there. Ignore the scribbles, um, but I'll cut slightly wide of that just because I want to make sure there's plenty of room for this thing to fit in there. So. All right, got me my multi-tool. If you don't got a multi-tool, get a multi-tool. These things, you can use them for everything, but they can also do things that nothing else can do. So check one of these out if you don't have one already. All right, and there it is. We have the Zero Breeze Mark II under the bench. And then the exhausts are coming out inside the closet. So next step is gonna to be to drill a couple holes in this wall here so that they can escape from here into the underbed zone. However, it is getting late at night and it is an absolute mess in here. I cannot go to bed at all like this. Like this. <laughs> so time to clean up and call it a wrap and we'll get back to it tomorrow. And I am back from work and we're gonna get right back into seeing how far we can get on this AC install. I left off last night with having gotten my exhaust hoses into the closet. So now we're gonna pick up and see if we can get them out of the closet and try get them towards the sidewall of the bus. That's gonna require some crawling under the bed and deep into the garage area to get to that zone to see where we can drill some holes. So let's go. Get started. So I'm now under the bed in the garage and I'm gonna turn this around so you can see the little utility zone that I'm gonna run these vents through. Way up in here is where I have my water pumps and my accumulator tank as well as my water inlets above there and my tank right there. I'm gonna have those vents come through the wall right there, send it on frame, and then go out the side of the bus right there through what is now the sealed side wheelchair door. Let me show you what that is from the outside. So those vents will then come through right here. All right, drill, hole saw, four inch, same size as the diameter of the vents. So they should fit right through. It is way too tight in there to film this. So I'll catch you once they're done. All right, don't mind the sawdust, but I have my intake and exhaust headed out into this area. Now I just gotta drill the holes going to the outside. With our pilot hole through, time to take the whole saw to the outside. And that is what it's gonna look like. Not too bad. All right, it's not installed yet, but here they are. Intake and exhaust, it's super messy, so don't mind that. Still gotta do a lot of cleanup, but now let's go back to the inside and clear out space enough around these holes so that the pipes can fit over top as well as a hose clamp. So there's just enough clearance to get a hose clamp on there and tighten that up. And then these should be almost good. So we are back working on the Zero Breeze Mark II install in the bus. I took a five day weekend and went camping with my family and some friends. I had no service and I did not take the bus. So I was completely removed from this for the weekend. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I probably have, but I do work a full-time job right now. So 
this kind of project is like a couple hours in the evening after work after the gym when I have some time so that's why it's so slow that's why it takes so many days in a row but anyways we're back to it last we left off I just drilled those holes in the wall those are gonna be my intake and my exhaust we're gonna continue working on it from here got all my tools out spread all over the place what we're working on today I started drilling the hole for the drain as with all AC condensation happens and that condensation needs to be drained away somewhere here where I'm at right now there's about 0% humidity so there's no condensation that comes out of the zero breeze when I use it however anywhere else there will be condensation so I gotta have a way to drain it if I'm gonna install it permanently because I don't want to have to gently lift it go drain in my sink every time so it comes with a little drain hose I'm drilling a hole through the floor so I could just run that drain hose out through the floor and it'll slowly drip out onto the street wherever I'm using it However, the hole saw that I was using to cut the hole has completely lost all its teeth. It was an old piece, so it's kind of done for. So I'm gonna buy one tomorrow and continue using that tomorrow. In the meantime, we're gonna try drill our holes for our vents on the inside closet. This is the one part that's making me a little nervous because this is the only part of the install that I cannot undo or hide. All the other holes I've cut and all the other install bits they're so far deep in storage and garage space that if I need to undo or change or revert the decision, it's not a big deal. These vent holes though, once they're cut, they're cut and I can't go back and they are visible in the bus space forever. So we're going to go cut those. We're going to be gentle. We're going to do it right the first time so we don't mess anything up and hopefully not make too much of a mess. I get sawdust and chunks all over everything. So let's go do that. Look at that huge mess I made. Ah! Uh, but there it is, vent number one. How am I gonna not make that mess on my bed? Oh! Okay, there we are. There's one vent. And then in here is the T. Now I gotta mark as close as I can a spot to drill this other side. Drill a pilot hole and then come at it from this side without making a mess on my bed. dust catching mechanism here. So considering how big of a mess was made on this side, I think I did a pretty good job on that side. I only spilled a few crumbs and the rest went in the bag. Okay, I am pleased with this. There's a vent on this side and a vent on this side. And in between, they're connected with this T, which will have a hose going down to the cold air coming from the zero breeze. Again, close off this side when I want to cool the bed and just do sleeping time cooling. There we go. Now that's not letting any air out there. And then leave that side open for when it's time to cool the bed. Woof! Oof, it's coming together. I only got one more four inch hole to drill and it's at the bottom of the closet so that the hose can get from the seat to the closet and then connect it all together. So I actually had one more hole to drill and that was right here, the bottom of the front of the seat because that is where the air intake of the AC unit is. Not the intake for the actual compressor system in the back, but like the front. So the air that is gonna be cooled will come in through here go in, get cooled, go out through the hose, and then come out up top. I am going to hook this up directly to my 12 volt battery bank. Now, time out. This is a 24 volt machine. So, Zero Breeze actually sent me their 12 to 24 volt converter. That's gonna be more efficient than going through my inverter. So, this is gonna step up the voltage from 12 to 24. It's gonna drop the amperage from the higher amperage coming off my batteries to half that being delivered to the machine. So in order to figure out what exactly I need to connect this unit up, we need to do some quick math. It is rated for 240 watts. Let's divide that by the voltage that is gonna be coming off of the batteries. So that is divided by 12. That leaves us with 20. 20 amps is what should be being drawn off of the batteries 
through my power hookups to this converter, which will take it to 24 volts. That means that I need wires that are able to hold more than 20 amps. When you're setting up a DC electrical system, you must have your weakest point in the whole circuit be your fuse. The fuse has to break before anything else will ever break due to stress or high load or heat. Otherwise, your wires, your connectors, your power piece, everything else can be the fuse. And when a fuse breaks, it's because it overheats, it melts, and thus breaks the current. If your wire is what is overheating and melting, you're gonna cause an electrical fire. So, thus we had to do that quick math to calculate our total amperage draw, because if your wires cannot hold the amperage draw that is demanded by whatever accessory you're running, that is how you overcome the capabilities of your wires and create your wires into a fuse. So, we've established that we need wires that can hold at least 20 amps. I have referenced my wire gauge chart if you are unsure of what you're doing, if you're doing this kind of install, please consult an electrician. Always consult an electrical wire gauge chart so that you can properly size your wires. I have sized up just to be extra certain and gone with 10 gauge wire for the distance that I'm running. Now, I will put a 25 amp fuse in. That way, even if it's running at normal power at 20 amps, I'm not gonna trip my fuse. This wire can hold 30 amps, so even if it exceeds what it is rated to do, somehow there's more power being drawn than should be, it'll still break the fuse before it ever breaks my wires. That's how you wanna design your little circuits. Um, so, I have two sections of 10 gauge wire. It is stranded, that way it's a little bit more flexible and it's also gonna be easier to work with in my setup. I'm gonna connect these to my distribution panel underneath my bed on its own dedicated fuse line. I'll pop a fuse in there once everything's all done and then it's gonna be ready to go. Uh, they did not have any red when I went to the store, so I have white for my hot, black for my negative, positive, negative, whatever you want to call it, hot, cold. Um, part of what they sent me in the kit is this little lead here. You'll see these two are pre-tinned, they are stranded leads, and one says positive on it and the other says negative. So I'll be connecting my white line to this one and my black line to this one. I'll be soldering those together, heat shrinking it so I have a secure connection that's not gonna break or come loose or cause a short. On the other side of this pigtail is a plug and this plug is gonna go directly into the plug for the power converter. 12 volts at 20 amps are gonna go into here. 24 volts at 10 amps are gonna come out of there and it's gonna power the air conditioner. So that's about that. All I'm gonna to need to do is hook these up, solder them together, heat shrink it, then plug it in and we're gonna be good to go. After setting and securing the drain, I have also soldered my positive and negative of my purchased wire onto the pigtail that Zero Breeze sent me. So that is ready to be hooked up to my batteries and plugged in. So So there's the plug connection, it goes up. You see the black and white pass through the stud, above the fridge, through that stud, follows the rest of the wires in to the back side of here. And then if you look up at the top, that clear fuse is my 25 amp fuse, and you'll see the white line coming out there. That is hooked up and ready to rip. And then the big black one comes into this big negative bus bar down here. And with the garage portion of the install done. Now it's time to finish up the last piece of hose and the T inside the closet so that we can pop it in there and give it a rip, see how it goes. Oh my lands, that was some tight squeezing and odd position. Uh, doing anything in this closet is just such a pain in the butt because there's no space to reach there. My arms don't both fit in at the same time so it's all one-handed, but we have a hose coming out of the top of the zero breeze going through the back corner of the closet, coming up from the bottom of the closet to our T. The system is complete, save for those vents on the outside, but not gonna worry about those right now, not gonna do those today. We're gonna get this thing plugged in and see if we're pushing cold air come the top of this T. Uh, 
there's definitely air coming out of here and that is that it is in it's powered it's running i can feel cold air coming out of this vent but you definitely can't feel it jetting like super far out so i'm gonna give myself a couple days we're gonna we're gonna use it for a couple hours at a time we're gonna sit here we're gonna sit there we're gonna close this we're gonna go cool down the bed we're gonna see how this really performs we've unboxed it we've taken a quick look at it in another video we tested it against what it says online now we're really gonna see what kind of difference it makes in this kind of space considering that I've tried to optimize its performance as far as I can do when it comes to installing so now that is it it is in that situation we're gonna let it go for a couple weeks uh, I'm gonna use it where I need it when I can I'm gonna try to figure out the best way for this unit to really make a difference in this space and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna make another video reporting really real life real use case exactly how I feel it fits and it works in my situation here this video has been how to install it how I install it some tips that maybe you can draw from if you're gonna do something like this whether it's with this unit or a different unit things to consider if you have something that you think I should consider then let me know down below in the comments Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode of this little mini-series about the Zero Breeze in a couple of weeks once I've gotten a chance to analyze how this works and see how I feel about it in real life use. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and following along. I appreciate the support. Hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more videos and like this video if you learned something or if you want to see some more. We'll see you in the next one here in the BBA bus. Bye.